All right, guys. Um, my name's Keegan Hurst, and I'm going to be talking you through um, six or so exercises that you can use at home using things around the house that you can use to not only maintain muscle, but build some muscle as well. Um, I know, obviously, everyone's frustrated that they can't get to the gym, they can't exercise, they can't do what they normally do, and they've gone out of the routine a bit. So, you can use these exercises, build your own full body routine if you want, you can do them, um, we'll go through that at the end, but I'm just going to run you through some stuff to, to hit your legs, your back, um, and your shoulders. So I'm going to start with a, a squat. I know that a lot of people do a lot of squatting and a lot of variations of squatting, and now they're not able to do that because can't get in a gym, can't get under a bar, can't get on the leg press, whatever it might be, and people are struggling to, to load the legs up. Because obviously, we have a full body squat, we have a normal uh, squat, but we're not going to get a lot of weight through there. So there's a couple of things that we can do. We can either slow it down. If you want to make any exercise harder, always slow it down. Um, if you are struggling, I'm literally just using household items here, things that I've got in my house and that I'm sure you've got as well, um, to, to help fix things up. So if you want to work on your depth for your squat, you can use something just to prop your heels up. Um, so I've got a blanket here. Just put your heels on it. I'm going to be about an inch, maybe two inch off the floor. And that's going to allow you to get more depth because it's going to take um, your lack of ankle mobility out of it. So if you're going to just do a normal squat, obviously you can do it nice and slow. Heat, feet want to be shoulder width apart. Get some good depth, hold at the bottom, and then come back up. And just using a blanket to do that um, is, is going to improve your ankle mobility and improve your range of movement. Now, if you want to start loading that up, and you know, body squat's quite easy, you'd have to do a lot of body squats to get any kind of stress into your legs. Obviously, squats are it in your quads, your hammies, your glutes. Um, a good way to load it up is just using a rucksack. So here, I just got a rucksack, and I've, I've literally loaded it up with um, bath salts. I've got loads of bags of bath salts. Um, so you can actually even figure out what um, what weight you've got in there. So it'll say where it is. You could use shampoo, bottles of water, bottles of pop, beer, bottles of wine. Might as well use them to do something proactive before you drink them all on a night. So load, load a rucksack up, and then you can just put it on like you normally would, but make sure that the, the loops are nice and tight, because what you don't want is you don't want the weight to be down here. When we do a squat, the weight should be uh, across the back of our shoulders. So we want to repl replicate that as much as possible with um, a rucksack. So Tighten it right up, wrong ones, tighten it right up so it's, it's nice and high. And then again, feet shoulder width apart, think about bending your hips and your knees at the same time, lower yourself down, stick your arms out for count balance, get good depth, down at the bottom, and then raise yourself up. Now when you do a squat, a little tip for you, when you come up, don't lock your knees out at the top, because if you lock your knees out at the top, you're going to take all the tension out of your quads, and we want to maintain that as much as possible because we more, the more we maintain the tension in it, um, the more work and stress you're going to put through them. So you'll fatigue quicker without doing as much work, which is what we want. We want to make our workouts as efficient and as optimal as possible. So rucksack on, feet shoulder width apart, raise your ankles, uh, raise your heels if you need to, elbows and knees bending at the same time, slow it down to make it more difficult on the way down, nice and slow on the way up, and then just lock it. Uh, knock a few reps out like that, nice and slow. Another tip for when you're doing a, a squat, look at the floor, so look a couple of feet in front of you. If you look up like that or up in the air like that, it's going to affect um, your spine and it's not as easy to engage all the muscles that we should be doing and it's going to fatigue your neck and, and your upper back as well. So look at the floor, a couple of feet in front of you and just go through a few reps like that, not locking out. And now you've got a squat. Now, that's a normal traditional back squat. Maybe you want to mix it up and make it more quad dominant. So to do that, all you have to do is uh, replicate a front squat. And to do that, we would um, go, we're just going to swap the rucksack around so that it's on the front instead of the back. So when you do a normal front squat and you hold the bar across here, 
rather than the weight being across your back, it's across your front, and that means that you have to keep your spine more upright. And when you keep your spine upright, it takes your hamstrings out of it, and means your quads have to work harder. So if you want to hit your quads more, front squatting is the thing to do if you can't get on a leg extension or anything, because we're not in a gym. So at home, a front squat is going to hit your um, quads more than a back squat. So just the same setup, just put that your rucksack on the front. Now the weight's in a different place, means I'm not going to lean over like this, I'm going to stay, excuse me, more upright. Again, if you need to raise your heels, I don't, so I'm not going to. Um, same cell, arms out in front, nice and slow down. And you see that my back angle is much more upright now, I'm not leaning forward like that. I'm nice and upright, and that's going through my quads more, and then driving up, not locking out, and down again. Nice and slow, keep it controlled, and then power up. Push it into the floor, don't think about lifting your body up. Think about pushing the floor away, and that'll get that uh, mind-muscle connection in the quads, and you feel a lot more benefit when you're doing your squats. So that's a squat, or a couple of variations of. And that's gonna predominantly hit your quads. So next up, we're gonna look at doing something to hit your hamstrings. Um, a lot of people, Underwork the hamstrings, and if you've got a nice, nice strong hamstrings and nice strong glutes, what we call posterior chain, the muscles that run up your back, if you've got those, they're going to um, mitigate any lower back pain that you've got. A lot of people neglect these because you can't see them when you look in the mirror. We all focus on our quads, our abs, our chest, our shoulders, our arms because we can see them, but you can't see the stuff at the back. But that's the important stuff that we need to work on that's going to give you good posture, good stability around your core, um, and ultimately make you stronger. So I've just got a hand towel here, you can use a tea towel, you can use a, a cloth, a blanket, what, whatever suits you. Obviously you need some kind of smooth floor, so don't try to do this on a carpeted floor. Um, and all we're going to do is, is put your towel down there and we'll move that. We're going to lie down. Heels are going to go on the towel. Now for this, you're going to need a, a, a reasonably strong core and because that's going to hold us up so that we can keep the tension in our hamstrings so we're going to start with our heels up heels underneath our knees core switched on if your core is switched on then that means that the gap uh, at the bottom of your back will disappear so that's a good indicator that you've got your core on if you find that you're having to move your pelvis to get rid of that gap then, you've, then you're just manipulating the, the position of your spine, you're not actually switching your core on. So without my pelvis moving, I make that gap disappear, that means my core's on. And then I'm going to keep my core on, I'm going to lift it up, and I'm going to come up onto my shoulder blades at the back here. Alright, and that gives me a good, good purchase. I can put my elbows down if I need to, I can put my hands down if I want to. I'm going to switch my core on, and I'm going to clench, clench my bum cheeks, switch my glutes on, so that they're on, and that's going to make my hamstrings fire up. Now the job here is to keep all that switched on, and then I'm going to extend my legs, not to full lock out again, because that will take the tension out of my hamstrings, and we don't want that. So just about 15 degree bend in your knees, keeping all this switched on, and then pull that back in, all the way, and get a good squeeze in your hamstrings. Think, Don't think about bringing your heel to your bum. Think about your hamstring goes from your knee to your bum, Think about making that as small as possible and that will automatically bend your knee. Don't think about your feet and the towel. So, go through a few reps here. Core on, glutes on, extend, keeping that on, almost extend, almost fully extended. All this is still switched on, so I'm talking like this. Um, and then make that hamstring small and get a real good contraction and then go again. Using my elbows and my shoulders as balance and drive that in. And there you go, that's going to fire up your hamstrings and it allows you to get um, a, a, a lot of tension and a lot of stress into your hamstrings. Now if you can do that really well, you've got really strong hamstrings, you can go to one-legged ones. Um, just keep one foot in the air and go for one, one foot. If you need to regress it and you can't quite do that, just don't extend your legs as far as I did. So just go as far as you can. If, if you find that your core and your glutes switch off, then you've gone too far. You just work to keep those on because they're going to look after your lower back. If you don't have your lower back, uh, if you don't have your core switched on, 
and you're pushing up like this, it's gonna put a lot of strain on your lower back and, and that exercise is gonna hurt you. So it's really important that we have this switched on and our, our glutes switched on. So that's the hamstring towel curl. Um, next up, I'm just gonna go through some variations of press ups. So obviously we wanna be able to continue to work our chest even though we're not in lockdown, we can't get under a bench press. I'm gonna go through a regular press up and then I'm gonna look at ways that you can regress it to so make it easier if you can't do a full press up and also ways that you can make it more difficult in case the normal press up's uh, too easy. Now, the aim of a press up is not to move your body up and down, it's to engage your pecs. What we wanna do is we wanna make sure that our pecs are doing the work. Your triceps are gonna do a bit of the work as well, but we wanna make sure our pecs are doing it. We don't just wanna lift ourselves up and down because whenever we're training and whenever we're doing any kind of um, strength training or build it or hypertrophy building muscle what we've got to think is that we're training muscles not movements when we do a bicep curl we're not thinking about bending our elbow we're thinking about making our bicep as small as possible and then as lot and then uh, lengthening it we're not thinking about bending our elbow so again with our um, press ups we're thinking about making our chest small so when we lower ourselves down that makes the chest small uh, uh, that lengthens the chest, sorry, and then when we push ourselves up, that's making the chest, uh, the pec short, which is what we want. So, for um, uh, press up, you want to make sure that your arms are not out to the side. This is a really common mistake. Arms out to the side, when you do that, it just loads up your shoulders, puts loads of pressure in your shoulders, and it just makes them hurt, and it's really difficult to engage your chest with your arm up here. So arms want to be around 45 degrees. The closer you bring your arms down, the more tricep you're gonna work and less pec. So somewhere about 45 degrees is gonna hit tricep and pec, double bubble, happy days. So we're gonna lie down, make sure that you, a good rule of thumb is to have your hands in line with like where your nipples are. So rather than up here, out where your shoulders are, down here, in line with your nipples, and then you can adjust the width so that it's comfortable. Your elbows should always be going backwards when you do a press up, they shouldn't be flaring out to the side. So, hands in position. A common thing people do is lift the bum up in the air, and, and when you go down, that's gonna put pressure on your shoulders and on your lower back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tuck our pelvis under like that, and it gives you that nice straight back position. Core switched on, glutes switched on, I'm gonna lower myself down, my elbows are going backwards, and then instead of thinking about lifting myself up, I'm gonna think about pushing the floor away, and that makes me engage my pecs more. I'm also not locking my elbows out, because if I lock my elbows out, that again is gonna take the tension out of my pec, and we don't want that. So I'll just go through a few reps here. So not, bum's not up like that, it's tucked under, core switched on, lower myself nice and controlled, push the floor away, Think about bringing those biceps together as you're pushing the floor away. Lower yourself, nice and controlled, and push the floor away. So press up, tuck your bum under, think about your arm position, elbows should be going back. When you're driving upwards, you're gonna push the floor away from you, and you're thinking about bringing those biceps together so that you can make that pec as short as possible. Now, if you, maybe you could do press-ups and then you go try and do it and you actually switch everything on and you find it quite difficult. Couple of ways to regress it. So starting at the very easiest is just to do everything that I've just done, but drop your knees. So arms are in the same position, core switched on. Um, think about putting your knees underneath your hips. You don't want to be leaning forward like that because then you're going to be putting loads of strain on your abs and you're going to be thinking about them rather than thinking about your pecs. So knees under um, hips, arms in the same position in line with my nipples, the elbows are gonna go backwards, core switched on, down, and then drive the floor away. Whenever you do a press up, don't move your head. What a lot of people do is, they put their head down like this, and then they lower themselves, and then they don't get a full range of movement, or they end up doing this, and then it makes them kind of do this. So keep your head in a neutral position, look a couple of feet in front of you. So if you need to strip it right back, drop down onto your knees. If you want to, if you, on your knees are too easy, but a full press up is too hard, then your next protocol is to 
elevate your, your hands so you're going to a full press up everything that we've just done so tuck your pelvis core switched on um, <coughs> core switched on glutes switched on elbows backwards lower yourself and then drive the floor away so it's exactly the same cues as a normal press up but because of the angle you're going to engage more of your uh, lower part of your pec where you're stronger so think about when you're doing a, a decline bench press you're always stronger in a decline position than an incline position so then the next step up would be a normal press up flat on the floor and then if you find a normal press up too easy then uh, your next thing to do is to elevate your feet so whereas elevating your hands is more of a decline uh, press up elevating your feet makes it more of an incline and hits the top of your pec um, more than a flat one so again exactly the same cues just with your feet up in the air so you can, I'm just using a footstool here hands in line with my nipples um, pelvis tucked core switched on glutes on elbows are going backwards and then drive the floor away if you don't do all that and you end up with your bum up here and you're coming down here you're going to put loads and loads of pressure through your shoulders so it's really important core on tuck that pelvis under switch your glutes on so all this is locked in position and then you're thinking about making that pec as short as possible um, so that's a push up next one I'm just going to run through a banded row um, now obviously people might not have resistance bands lying around their house but if you can get a, some resistance bands they're a really useful tool to be able to replicate machines at a gym so I'm just going to do this one nice and quick and then I'm going to show you a back exercise it doesn't require any uh, any equipment so for a banded row all you would do is sit on your bum feet out you're going to put the band around your feet you're going to have fingers through the band thumbs up to the sky so what we call a neutral grip or a hammer grip and um, legs are out you don't have to lock them fully out lock your knees out you can have a soft bend just so that they're not you don't want to be doing this then whenever we do any kind of upper body movement we want to think about putting our shoulder blades I, I call it putting them in your back pocket so you're thinking about going like this which means chest out a little bit shoulder blades are down traps are nice and relaxed what a lot of people do is they, they exercise like this uh, and, and it fires up all the traps and that's why people's shoulders and they're really tight around the neck so it's really important that we keep everything switched off up here so that we can target the muscles that we want to target and in this case it's our lats uh, this is simulating a, a seated row so here you're going to go shoulder blades back and down which means chest is a little bit out and we'll look straight ahead I'm going to switch my core on turn this on so this is switched on now and then rather than thinking about I'm not just going to pull the band back because anybody can pull a band what I'm going to think about doing is driving my elbows back and to the middle so that they touch at the base of my spine now physically they can't do that but if I think about that in my head I'm not thinking about my hands gripping it I'm not thinking about anything lower than my elbow I'm just thinking about driving my elbow back to the base of my spine and that's going to really engage that lat and the last bit on this when you return don't let the band pull you you push the band even though th th there is um, pressure for the band put to pull you forward you make sure that you drive the band forward and that'll keep that tension in the lat so rather than just getting a contraction you're also getting tension in the eccentric the lowering phase the lengthening of, of the muscle so just to run through, through, through a few reps easy for you to say um, thumbs up shoulder blades back and down core switched on and then I'm going to drive my elbows all the way back as far as I can and then I'm going to push my elbows forward nice and slow and controlled again I'm not fully locking out just a slight bend in my elbows shoulder blades are back and down traps are still switched off drive those back squeeze at the top push it forward and again elbows back to the base of my spine get a good contraction and then drive that forward I'm not letting this happen I'm not going like this, I'm not leaning forward, I'm not rocking, I'm not just pulling the band like this, everything's deliberate. I'm really focused on making that um, lat the focus of the exercise. So that is a seated banded row. <coughs> Get rid of that. 
Next one, I'm going to show you something called the Cobra. Um, this is a really good one. Sometimes people find it really difficult to um, engage the lat. So I'm just going to run you through this. And it's a really good way to fire your lats up so you, that you know what, what your lats should feel like when they're contracted. And then when you get back to the gym and you're doing lat pull downs or you're doing a row, you know what it should feel like. So what you're going to do is you're going to lie on your front. And then we're going to switch our core on. Arms are out 45 degrees to, to the side. We're going to switch our core on. We're going to lift our chest just one inch off the floor so it's not far at all. Don't arch back like this because that's going to put loads of pressure on your lower back and we don't want that. Arms are out 45 degrees. Core's on, up an inch. And then I'm going to think about bringing my shoulder blades together and down. So like that. So I'm trying to make them touch at the small of my, in the small of my back. Obviously they can't do that. But to do that, that's going to make my lats contract. It's a muscle that's under your armpit. And you're going to feel it get really tight. Don't think about bringing your shoulders back like this. This is a common one. We're not trying to do that. We're not trying to fly. We're trying to move our armpits down our side. So it's really important that our core is switched on. So that we, we don't end up doing this. Core on. Armpits down to my side. Get a good squeeze there. And then relax and come down. Core on, chest up, armpits down, squeeze and lower it. And that exercise is called a prone cobra. You can do that, um, just do it on the floor. Core on, chest up an inch, don't overextend. And think about moving your arms out to the side. Think about moving your armpit down your side like this. And it's making this muscle, this lat, under here, contract. Last exercise. So something that people get, I see people get wrong a lot of the time in the gym is a lateral raise, so raising the dumbbell out to the side. And the reason people get it wrong is because they go far too heavy. This muscle, your, your shoulder split into three muscles, you've got your front deltoid, you've got your uh, lateral deltoid, you've got your rear one. And your uh, lateral deltoid is a really small muscle. So it can't lift a lot of weight. So if you give it too much weight to do, your body's smart and it'll recruit other muscles like traps, like other parts of your delts. And what we end up is people doing this kind of thing. And what we want is, we want to set our shoulder blades back and down and we want to try and isolate this muscle, muscle, muscle as much as possible. So here, I've got a tin of chopped tomatoes. So that's like 400 grams. So it's, it's not a lot of weight at all. Or you can use a litre, that's a litre bottle of water, which is one kilo. Um, again, you can use different things here. If you've got some little dumbbells lying around the house, you can use them. But what you want to think about is shoulder blades back and down, so traps are nice and soft. If you stick your fingers in your traps and, and they feel soft, it goes in, that means they're not tense. If my traps are switched on and I touch them, they're hard. Um, and that means they're engaged and we don't want that. So shoulder blades back and down which means my chest comes out a little bit. I, I tend to do it as if you think you're, like you're holding an orange under your chin and that'll give you a, um, a, a good, that'll kind of set your spine at neutral. You don't want to be looking down, you don't want to be looking up. Just as if you've got an orange under your chin. And then rather than thinking about the weight, again, similar to before with the banded row, don't think about anything that's going on below your elbow. We're not bothered about that. Think about lifting your elbow up to the side and lowering it down, that they cues, all right? So shoulder blades back and down, chest slightly out, traps nice and soft, core switched on, and then I'm thinking about raising my elbow, and I'll, I'll feel it all down the, from my shoulder down to about here where, you, where the uh, lateral delt ends. Up here, get a squeeze, keep these soft, don't let it do this, don't let your head come over, keep it nice and soft. And then lower it down again, push that weight down. Don't let the weight just drop, you push it down. Don't come all the way down to the side, take the tension out, keep it there. And then again, lifting that elbow nice and high, getting that squeeze, that contraction. We're trying to make that uh, lateral delt as small as possible. And then lower it down. And I'm forcing that down. One more. All, and it's all in that. I'm not feeling it anywhere up here. I'm feeling it all down from here down to here. And that's where we want to be feeling it. 
So there you've got six exercises that's going to target your glutes, hamstrings, lats, shoulders, triceps with the press ups. So you can put them together a, a bit of a full body routine. So you could do all six exercises, maybe go through um, one set of 10 to 12 reps on every exercise all the way through, no rest and then have a breather uh, and maybe do four sets. Or you could do um, exercise, do, put them into three exercises, so triceps, you might go squats, press-ups, lat raise, um, and do four sets of 12, maybe 15, um, have a rest after each lot of three, and then do the next lot of three, which would be towel curls, banded row, and lat raise. So, they're just a few exercises that you can do that are going to um, help maintain, maybe even build some muscle. Obviously, it all depends on your nutrition, your sleep, and your activity levels, and things like that. But if you're looking to maintain everything, muscles work on a use it or lose it basis. So it's a good idea to keep them ticking over, even if we can't progress. Because it's, it means that when we do get back to the gym, we're not going to have to build back up to where we were and then go again. At least we've not lost anything. So just using things around the house, you've got the rucksack squat, you've got the towel curls, you've got the press-ups, different variations, banded row. I would highly recommend buying some uh, bands. They usually come in a pack of four. So I've got all my four here. Different thicknesses, which means different difficulties. I think they're, they were 30 quid. Um, so you don't have to look at anything ridiculous like dumbbells or anything. You've got that prone cobra and you've got a lateral raise. And again, you could use a band for a lateral raise. You can use bands for uh, hamstring curls. You can use bands for all sorts of things. So they're useful things to have around the house. So, if you found this useful, if you found it informative, go give me a follow. Um, drop me a DM if you found it useful. Also, share it, stay safe, tag sports shoes in it, and continue. Um, have, have fun standing still. There is no fun standing still even. Can't even get the hashtag right. But stay at home and do it. Cheers, guys.